Welcome back, students of history. You're here, you hit my channel, subscribe, Mr. Lance Flip, U.S. History Classroom. Video four, title is on the screen. Today we're gonna get into the 13 colonies, looking at the physical characteristics that we would see as we take a tour of the 13 colonies of the pre-United States. Now, kids in my classroom who are, who are doing getting their answers, you're gonna use those listening skills. So you're gonna process while you read. You're gonna think, of course. If you need to, you're gonna have to pause and rewind so you can get those answers from the video so we can come to class prepared and get and get into the deeper discussions. Of course, check those questions as you go along on your sheet and you're gonna be able to find those clues on my screen to help you get the answers that you need to set the foundation. Now, we're gonna start here as always with our vocabulary from the lesson. I will pronounce these now. Number one, geography. Number two, climate. Number three, port slash harbor. Number four, agrarian. Number five, lumber or timber. Number six, mill. Number seven, manufacturer. Hit that pause button, get them now. Awesome, here you are, you're back. Let's get going. I ask a question at the beginning of the lesson. Let's go with some basic knowledge here. By the end of the lesson, can we answer the major differences? What are the major differences that we'll see in the weather, the, the land, the geography, the jobs of the 13 colonies? And then when we get a little deeper, how did these physical characteristics, what we can see, how did the, the these physical characteristics of the region kind of determine a person's life if you were to live there or, or go there during that time or move into the colony? So moving into the actual goodies of the lesson, here we go. This is the flag of England. Now the flag of England becomes the Union Jack because there's like a change there. We're going to call England Great Britain. So Great Britain, or England in this case, and I'm okay if you say either one of those in class, establishes and owns the 13 colonies. Now, the 13 colonies are along the east coast of America, and you can see there on the map that red section that's highlighted. This is the beginning of our future United States. This is kind of where the United States is going to grow from. But right now, we're going to call them colonies. The Atlantic Ocean is just off to the east right there. Now, these colonies were established for different reasons. So England had motivations. You remember Gold, God, and Glory from our previous video series? They wanted, England wanted to grow into their empire. So they had economic reasons, right? If you look on the list there, they had social reasons to spread. They had religious reasons and political or glory reasons. So there was a lot of motivation for England to grow their empire through different means here. So let's take a little road trip and I'll pack up my bags. I'm kidding, that's a joke corny, but we're going to take a quick tour of the 13 colonies now. Now, there are layers to the colonies. What do I mean by layers? Well, think of Shrek. Think of a parfait, right? Think of an onion. But I like to think of a burger, a beautiful burger. A beautiful burger has layers. Now, when we look at the colonies, there's going to be some layers to, their, to the learning of the colonies. And it's going to create the perfect mix of ingredients for us to learn and for a person back then to be living in. And we want to identify what are those layers. Now, when we go through the tour, the layers that we are going to discover are going to be as follows. The layers are the climate. Climate means what is the weather patterns like? Then another layer into the colonies is the geography. Geo meaning land. What are the physical features of the land in the 13 colonies? Then we have the economy. What is the method of making money there like? Because it can be different. Then we're going to look at religion and people, particular people. We're going to look at that, those two on a separate video. So in this video, we're going to focus on climate, geography, and economy. Notice that we have three divisions on the colonies map. You have that top, bottom, and then middle. I'm going to call them the three regions, right? The three areas or the three big areas of the 13 colonies. Yes, there's 13, 13 future states of America, but right now we're just calling them colonies because they're not completely settled. They're not fully developed. But in when I'm looking at the map, I can see that there are three regions, okay? So just be noticeable of that. All right, cool. So let's get going here into the tour. Now, before we get into the tour, let's talk about a harbor and a port because this does pop up a lot in the 13 colonies. Take a look at this picture right here. Observe it well. See the ocean right there, yeah? You see the land on one side, the ocean there. We've got a lot of ships parked there. Now, in a harbor, 
we can have a body of water. A ship can enter a channel. So the ship can enter a pathway like a road where access to goods or supplies can get to people on land easier. So ships and boats can have a transportation method. So there's two big advantages to living by the water if you're living in the colonies back in the day because you can have basically your private little stream or river area that can get you transportation and you can get goods faster because remember back then it was all through ships. Here's Boston Harbor in Boston, Massachusetts. Looks really busy there. And of course, the busiest port harbor uh, that, that I can think of right now is New York, uh, not to mention maybe Los Angeles on the West Coast. Very, very busy. Now, when you look at this map right here, that shows us some of the major port cities that we might know in our U.S. history. And you look at that map and you can see some of the biggies right there. Notice how they're right on the water. Now, there's something to note on this map. We have something that we have there in that little triangle of mountain. You see that? Those little shapes right there, those little triangles. These are the Appalachian Mountains. I want you to take note of these mountains because those mountains are going to come into play in a few lessons in a huge, huge way. And it's going to get in the way of a lot of future expansion of the 13 colonies, those mountains, those Appalachian Mountains there. So take note of those mountains there because they're going to come back into our lesson. Now, let's begin our tour because Mr. Land has talked enough. Here we go. We're going to start at the top. We're going to start at the top of the colonies. The region is called the Northern New England. Get it? New England. These people wanted to grow England just new. So we're going to start here. Let's name these, these colonies in order. Here we go. Number one, New Hampshire. Two, Massachusetts. Three, Connecticut. Connecticut. Got that one? Four, Rhode Island. Now, in class, I teach these pretty simple. Like, And the way I kind of try to get the kids to remember this, this, these, these four New England colonies, colonies is never make Cindy, Cynthia run. N-M-C-R. N-M-C-R. Never make Cynthia run. So we'll practice that in class. Now, what can we expect? Now, we're going to look at climate, geography, and economics. Let's start with the climate. I'm going to keep it the same for the whole tour. Climate is the weather. So if we go to the north, because it's so north, it's going to be cold. It's going to be frigid, meaning brr. So because it's so far to the north, it's going to be kind of cold winters there. So you see the arrow? Can you predict what kind of weather is going to come out of that cold winter? Can you predict what, the, what we're going to see outside our window during that winter season? If you thought snow, you were correct. So there's going to be lots of snow on the ground because it's so cold here. Now, that's going to become important because it's going to determine a lot of how people live here. So what would we see in its geography? Now, if we were out there, we would see a lot of mountainous, rocky soil terrain. Now, that rocky soil is going to create a bit of a problem. Now, there's going to be forests also because you're going to have all this rocky mountainous terrain. You're going to have lots of grow tree growth out there because it's going to be just dense forests, many, many trees covered in snow during those winter seasons. Now, think about it. If you're rocky, if you're living out there in New England and it's really rocky and the soil isn't great for, for, for plants to just kind of sprout like a farmer would, think about that. What is your economics or your money making going to be like? It's going to affect how you choose to make that money there in New England. So the economics is going to affect this. So it's going to create a poor farming. Did you predict that? It's going to have poor farming because the crops aren't going to take in that soil. But then those forests, they're going to create an opportunity. We're going to have a lumber mill. A lumber mill is a factory where wood can get processed, cut wood. And that wood can get torn down even further and sent out and sold. That is a lumber mill, also known as timber. Timber, right? That's what they call that. That actually means the wood there. Now, something interesting that you're going to see here is that there's going to be an ocean next to the New England region. So the people living here are going to be huge fishermen. They're going to be humongous on it. They even are going to hunt whales, kids. Whales, friggin' whales, because that whale blubber is going to be super valuable to oils, lamps, and fuel. Absolutely. Now, another cool job that comes out of those forests is going to be that men that work there are going to work with their hands. They're going to build ships. They're going to build huge ships because ships are the mode of transportation. So shipbuilding is huge in the northern colony. Now, major port cities that we will see in the northern colony in New England is New York City 
and Boston. So make sure you pause and rewind here to get all of that information on your charts. We want climate, geography, and economics, right? Excellent. So that's New England, New England colony in a nutshell. So we're going to move forward here to the middle colonies, the mid-Atlantic, also known as middle colonies, starting with number one, New York. Number two, Pennsylvania. Number three, New Jersey. Number four, Delaware. Those four make up the middle of the colonies. Now, I teach my kids in class to remember it like this. N-P-N-D, new pennies, new dimes. Did you get the new? New York, New Jersey, new pennies, new dimes. We're going to practice that in class. So let's add to our charts. What kind of climate will we see in the middle? Well, we're going to come down on our map. So our climate in the middle mid-Atlantic is going to be not as cold because it's not so far north. So the climate, I'm going to use the word moderate moderado, mild. It's going to be kind of Goldilocks, right in the middle. Not too cold, not too hot. So it's less extreme. You're not going to have those, those ridiculously harsh winters, right? So this means that you're going to have those great fields that are going to be available for soil to be farmed. So look, when we look outside our window and look at the geography or the physicalness of the land, we're going to see a lot of water movement. We're going to see some fast rivers and we're going to see something called coastal plains. Coast meaning near the ocean. Plains meaning fields, open. Now, this is going to be good for what? What are those coastal plains going to be good for? If you're thinking farming, you're right. But there's a specific type of farming that's going to happen in the middle colonies. It's going to be huge for grains and wheat. Did you get that? Wheat is going to be the number one crop being produced in the middle colony. It's perfect. You've got the great temperature and you've got the nice soil. We're going to call this place the breadbasket. The breadbasket. What a cool name. So when we think about the economics, the money, how do they make the money here? There's some differences. So wheat farming is going to be huge. So if you're a wheat farmer, you're rolling in the dough. No pun intended. huh? Rolling in the dough. So the wheat farmers are making money, but now you're going to have the introduction of factories being built. The middle colony is going to be filled with innovation, machinery. There's going to be factories. So think about it. If you have a lot of factories making money here, you're going to have a lot of workers that are going to be making money too. I'm talking about a very highly skilled worker called a trade worker. This is someone that works with their hands and builds stuff. Someone like a leather worker or someone like an ironsmith who's there making the swords and the metal and the armor. So these men were making highly skilled uh, goods in the middle colonies. Some major port cities, one I'm going to focus on is in Pennsylvania. It's called Philadelphia. Now the middle colonies are basically going to be real diverse. They're going to take all of the north all of the South, mix it together, and it's going to be a beautiful place to live. Very diverse. Now, let's finish with the Southern Colonies tour. Going in order. Here we go. Southern Colonies. Number one, Maryland. Number two, Virginia. Number three, North Carolina. Number four, South Carolina. And number five, Georgia. In class, I will teach my kids to memorize it this way. In order, from top to bottom, all the way south, my vehicle needs some gas. Boom. My vehicle needs some gas. So what's the South like? Well, we already know because our lessons in class have taught us what the South is really, really like. So let's take that knowledge and stretch it. The climate, we're all the way at the bottom of the map. So it's not going to be cold, right? What's it going to be like? It's going to be the opposite of cold. So everything the North is, this is going to be opposite in the South. So it's going to be really warm and really humid. So there's going to be a lot of moisture. Think about it. If you have a lot of warmness and moisture in the air, that's going to mean, boom, lots of rainy season. So you're going to love that if you're living in the South because you're going to be able to grow your crops. So when we look at our windows, our soil in the ground is going to be very fertile, meaning it's capable of growing awesome crops like the best. It's the best growing condition. And that also means that we're going to have lots of fields where we're going to have lots of crops growing. So those fields are going to lead to our money, our economics. Think about it. What kind of fields are we going to see out there? They're going to be very specific because we're going to call those plantations. Those plantations are called an agrarian economy. Agrarian is a word that means 
farming economy. We make money in the South off of our farms. But that means, unfortunately, there's some really negative consequences coming out of that because the cash crops that we're going to grow on the plantations, we're going to use slaves. And the South is going to be filled with slaves and plantations growing cash crops. So kids, while the South is making money, they are promoting slavery. They are making slavery blow up in the new world because they're dependent on that agrarian economy. Charleston is a port city that we'll look at. Kids, that takes us to the end of the tour. Mr. Land's gonna wrap it up here by asking you, can you identify some differences in the geography, climate, and economics of the colony? Do you know how they can make some money? A deeper question is, can you connect the type of job that a person would do depending upon where they would live? If you can answer those questions, you're awesome. You've done great. I'm going to see you on the next video. Guys, get your work done. Mr. Mr. Lance saying to you, peace, everybody. Be good.